You like trains, don't you? How do I know this? Let's call it an educated guess, but I'm on your side here. How could you not like trains? They carry the resource, they go where you tell them, and they click clack. My last video was fairly math heavy, and today I'm sliding back to the basics with Newton's lesser known fourth law of physics. Big plus train equals chooch. Recall that the big operator allows us to cancel out the implicit plus an equal sign deriving the fundamental expression big train chooch. How big? Some common lengths of trains are two, three, five, sometimes 10. We're using 32. That's right, three locomotives and 29 cargo wagons. My main goal is to create one train stop that can actually handle this level of cargo wagons while also giving me a justification to actually make a train this big. I'm putting the cargo wagon before the locomotive, so to speak. No one? Eh, okay. In case you don't know, in Factorio, the term sushi refers to allowing multiple types of resources to move on the same surface, most commonly belts, but more generally trains, warehouses, and even smelting. Maybe something like an omni smelter? <coughs> These can all be handled in a sushi-like way. If you haven't gathered by now, I love sushi. I am once again using the Crastoria 2 mod, so taking advantage of the warehouses is critical to this build. Warehouses might look like overkill, but their large surface area is very helpful for having many inputs and outputs to handle sushi throughput. Being six tiles wide, they also perfectly line up with the train stops and have exactly one tile wide gap in between them, the perfect distance for six inserters. The devs might as well have asked me to do this. First, let's turn on the load station. All 24 unique resources I plan to use get mixed up in the loading warehouses. Our sushi is looking so delectable. To handle this massive pile of garbage, I'm using what I call the lobster pot strategy, where each warehouse has three inserters pulling and pushing resources to adjacent warehouses. Each warehouse has one resource that is blacklisted on the outgoing inserters. This means that all resources can come through, but each warehouse has a resource that can never leave. Eventually, all warehouses should be left with one resource and our garbage has been sorted. Unfortunately, this expectation is too naive. Due to the default behavior of inserters, adjacent warehouses end up trading the same resources back and forth forever. And so I do what I always do, solve this with a massive pile of combinators. And here I was thinking this would be straightforward for once. Brace yourself. Getting the signal with the minimum or maximum in a combinator is more complicated than you might think. The solution I came up with is essentially iterative trial by combat. First we check to see what the highest signal is, eliminate that signal, then send the data through again, repeating this process until we are left with one signal. I was fairly happy to discover that there is a way of calculating this for 24 resources with only 32 combinators, but there is a drawback. Checking a resource takes one tick to calculate, so the worst case, a warehouse with all 24 resources will take 24 ticks, or almost half a second to calculate. This value is going to set the filter conditions for the filter inserter, so instead of sending the default resource, which is generally the maximum, inserters will take the minimum as long as it is not a resource selected to be trapped in the warehouse. Due to how the memory cell works, it needs to update on a timed cadence, and so I have chosen one second because these inserters are fast, and if we don't update fast enough, the inserters will sit idle because they have already transported 100% of the minimum resource source. <gasps> and it turns out that using the minimum has the same problem as using the default. Resources tend to get stuck between two warehouses. So I turned it up a notch. Each warehouse has four sets of three inserters and in and an out channel for both adjacent warehouses. This means I can create a sort of two channel system. If I have all of the up inserters set to the minimum and all the down inserters set to the default, which most of the time is the maximum, then resources that are relatively dense in their neighborhood will flow counterclockwise, while the resources that are relatively sparse will flow clockwise. In other words, each resource is much more likely to keep flowing until it finds its lobster trap. Let's test it. The choocher chooches in and unloads its garbage. You might start to notice that the inner lane is the minimum lane and the outer lane is the default. I've also built this counter that shows how many resources still need to be sorted. The inserters make it jump around a bit, but it'll get to zero... eventually. Nobody said this was a fast process. Let's turn it into some visual ASMR. One cool thing I noticed is that as we get closer to fully sorted, we can start to see waves of resources come around the outer loop. There's something so satisfying about spending 10 hours automating something that probably takes 10 minutes to do manually. Boom! 
zero. Finally, we're actually fully sorted. Don't get me wrong, I'm almost certain there are better ways to do this. I wouldn't be surprised if this is functionally equivalent to the slowest sorting algorithm and bots could do this too, but there's something to be said about having an answer to this question if I ever encounter it in the wild. I also realized after building all this that if I just let the resources flow in one direction, then resources can't pile up, inserters are never idle, and I save 840 combinators. But I bet you there are special starting conditions where this is faster. Look, sometimes you find yourself with a solution in search of a problem. I really like the big train only idea and there's a lot I want to explore. Making square train stops, integrating bots into this design, handling multiple trains, having only one unique train station name, having the large train shimmy between unloading stations based on logistic controls, there's a lot there. More than anything, I really like the idea of using only impractically big trains and I think it has a bright future. On that note, I have some homies that have expressed interest in doing a full playthrough in this style, so don't bet on this being the last time you see a big train chooching around.